heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful 4th of July. And this is my birthday, it's my birthday. And I just want you to know that I'm gonna upload a video either tomorrow morning or tonight. This video, I'm gonna share with you how I make pasta sauce with meat. Okay, let's get started. Okay, guys, um, to get in my pasta sauce, first thing I do is I puree my frozen peppers. And I don't turn my blender on high until I've got an emulsion, so I don't wear it out. You see here. So I did that for 30 seconds because I don't want to take all of um, the texture out of the peppers. And then you can see here I've taken my frozen tomatoes out of the fridge. I don't decor them. I don't uh, peel them. I know some people do, but I don't. And that texture and fiber is really good and healthy for you. So now I'm going to add some tomatoes. As you can see here, I just took the peppers, the red and the orange peppers, and I put them in this big soup pot. And right here, I can add other ingredients and make pepper soup, but I'm doing sauce. So you can see it's nice and smooth and creamy. So I'm going to add that back to the blend blender. And then I'll start adding my frozen tomatoes. All I do is take the stems off when I, and wash them really good. And I'm an organic grower, so I don't have to worry about anything. So all I did is just put the top on it. I know I'm talking loud. I put the top on it. I'm going to turn it up higher. I clean my kitchen as I go. Learned that from my mom. Now this, because it has the peels and the cords in them, I want to blend them very good. I learned how to make this sauce with the peels and the cores. Uh, in the tomatoes from one of my co-workers who was Italian. She says, we don't remove all of that. And I'm not stereotyping everybody. I'm just saying this particular lady was Italian and this is how she taught me how to do it. So you got to have a good blender in order to do this. And this is this uh, Ninja Ultima Blender. And you can see it looks like sauce already. That's what all that texture will do for you. So now I'm going to put this back on. Add more tomatoes. And just blend. When I make sauce, I really make sauce. So I'm going to push that down. Now that's two bags of tomatoes. Then I will put the top on. And everything has to be snapped into place or it won't start. You hear that motion so you know it's working. This is how I do it. I'm not 
recommending that you use your cores. This is what I do. See that it's been emulsified very, very well. Then you're gonna go ahead and pour it into your pot. Twist it. Uh oh. And then just add it. And I'm going to keep on doing this until I fill this pot almost all the way up. I'll be back. And you can see it already looks like sauce. <laughs> okay, so I'm cooking some ground beef. And to this ground beef, I'm going to add, and that's three pounds, by the way, and I'm going to add two pounds of Italian hot sausage. I usually do just ground turkey, and I still have some of those jars canned. But I'm going to be giving some of this pasta sauce with meat in it to friends. So I don't want to you know, impose my barely eating pork or beef on them. So today I decided to use some beef and pork in my meat sauce. So I'm gonna let this thoroughly cook, drain off the fat, and then I'll cook the Italian sausage, and uh, I'll come back. Okay, I'm going to add two bottles of this 100% natural chopped garlic in water. It doesn't have any salt in it. It just simply has water, garlic, and a little citric acid. So we're gonna add that, because I don't have any more garlic uh, left, except some caramelized garlic. Gonna add another jar to the pasta sauce. And my meat is cooking. To that, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of parsley. This is what I like in my sauce. I don't like cilantro too much, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that, maybe a tablespoon and just a little oregano, maybe a tablespoon. And I love basil. So since this basil is two years old, I'm gonna add it all. Because I already have some more from 2018, 2019, blah, blah, blah. I don't use too much salt. So I'm gonna use this that we took camping. That's about a tablespoon. I'm gonna put a lot of black pepper, about three tablespoons. I love black pepper. And then I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup of red pepper flakes because I love it. And then we're going to stir that up. Can you see in there? Let me see if you can see that. And it's on real low. And the sauce has condensed because I've been cooking it for about three hours. It's real thick. So I'm going to add more tomatoes. And you can see my meat cooking right there. Yep. Again, another look at the sauce. And we'll be back. So now I'm going to let you in a little secret. I don't know if you heard that pop. This is tomato sauce from 2019. It's still fresh, no evidence that the seal was not on, so I'm going to add that, I'll be back, I'm going to add another container and I'm going to be quiet so you can hear the, it pop when I pry the lid off.
hear it. You can look at it. Still looks and smells the way it was the day in July. Let me get my spoon out the way. 2019 that I canned it. Here are the caramelized onions that I did a month ago. Hear that pop? Oops. They will go in there. While I emulsified the peppers, the red and the orange ones, just hear that pop because I knew I was going to add some more that were already sliced up. Oh, and they smell so good. I'll let you see them. See that? Okay. One more jar of peppers. Hear that pop? And look at that garlic in there. Just smells great. Just smells delish. Okay. So now I've got plenty of sauce and it has been reduced. I'm going to turn up the fire on this gas stove and let it cook. So now let's recap what I've added. We have fresh tomatoes. We have fresh peppers pureed. We added black pepper, just a touch of salt. We've added uh, minced onions. We've added dehydrated basil, oregano, cilantro, and just a little parsley. And we added caramelized onions and red pepper flakes. Now, I'm gonna add the final ingredient that will thicken up the sauce. And that's because I don't have any more. I have three bags of tomatoes in the um, freezer that I will make my own tomatoes paste. And um, this is going to make this sauce nice and thick. And I don't know about you, but my mother would pay, take a little water and put it in the cans. <laughs> and get every ounce of that tomato paste out. And remember, you're not water bath canning this sauce with meat in it. You are going to pressure can it. So you have a little leeway in adding what you like because you're going to pressure can these quarts because they have meat in it for 90 minutes so you don't have to have an exact recipe when you're pressure canning so add as much seasoning or as little seasoning you can add sugar if you like you can add olive oil because you're going to pressure can this. You don't have to have an exact recipe. So we turned up our heat and we're gonna bring this to a boil, constantly stirring it. And I have taken the same recipe that I'm using. Instead of adding meat, I add eggplant. Did you see all that goodness of the peppers? So that's going to be delish. I'm going to rinse that black pepper off there. That looks better. So there goes my gooey, thick sauce 
with the onions and pepper and garlic. And I'm bringing that to a boil while at the same time, my meat is cooking over here. I need to stir that meat up. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I just realized I didn't film where after, after I drained the meat, I um, put it into the saucepan soup pot. And even if you don't cook it all the way, don't worry about it because we cold pack raw chicken and pressure can it for 90 minutes and it thoroughly cooks it. So you don't have to worry about any of the hamburger or special sauce that didn't thoroughly get cooked because it will get cooked when you pressure can it. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna let this simmer for about 30 more minutes. If I didn't tell you guys this, Today is my birthday, it's July 4th, and I am always reminded of my mother when I cook. She passed away on my birthday. Yep, let me tell you guys, my, I had a beautiful, graceful, classy mother, and it hurt so bad when she passed. But all of her teaching has stayed with me. And on her obituary, her seven children wrote a poem to her from our hearts. And my poem, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I do remember saying something like, although you went home to be with the Lord on my birthday, I promise you, I will never hold it as a sad occasion in my heart. And I'm telling you guys, that promise that I made to my mother in that obituary has stayed with me all these years. I never get sad about my mother passing on my birthday because I know she was in a better, is in a better place. And the last time she was out before they brought her back, uh, six minutes, so she was brain dead. So she would not have wanted to live like that. So I know she's with God, and one day I'm going to see her again. So this is July 4th. It's my birthday, and I'm never going to be sad on my birthday because I promised my mother that I would not do that, and I don't. Okay, so we've got some good meat in here. What I'm going to do now is get my pot immerser, emulsifier, and I'm going to break up some of that meat. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so here is the pot stir. And all I'm doing is just putting it down into the sauce. And it will break up the large pieces of meat. And I'm not gonna waste time showing you this, so I'm gonna stop filming and I'll take care of this. Okay, so now I want to show you how meaty and how that meat broke up. But you still have pieces of pepper and other herbs and spices in there. So we'll cook this for 20 more minutes. And guys, it's time to can. And all you have to do is just take this jar off the shelf, cook you some pasta, warm up your sauce, and it's done. You've got a meal. Here we go. And you can see it's bubbling. So now I need to turn down the heat, put it on low, and just let that sauce simmer. Okay, I'm canning this for you guys. I usually don't can around this time of the year because it's just too hot here in North Texas. But I just want to review that I have sanitized my jars and hot soapy water and then I dip them in a pot of boiling water and turn them over. I have my lids simmering. Can you see that? You don't have to boil them a whole lot anymore because they don't have as much rubber on them as they used to. 
and in fact, Balls and Care have uh, merged. They're one company, and on their um, containers, they tell you the lids will last 18 months. I'm here to tell you that they'll last longer. However, they tell you that, I guess, so you don't um, sue them. Uh, but always check your lids periodically. I also have some vinegar here. This is what I sanitize the top of my jars because it'll remove any excess oil. And you know there's oil in meat sauce. And here's a little cup that I'm going to put the vinegar in. Uh-oh, I dropped that lid, so I'll just leave it down there until I finish so that I can wash that off. And then I have my debubbler. I have my uh, jar remover when I take them out of that hot pressure canner. And of course I have all these jars that I sanitize. And here's the funnel and I started filling this one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one up. And I think I told you on another video, but I'll say it again. You don't have a lot of uh, debubbling to do with the thick sauce. This sauce has meat in it and we're gonna fill it up to right here, you can see that, right to that rim, and that'll leave you room for um, the pr uh, pressure canning process, okay? So that's a little bit more in there that I want. So I'm going to get a clean spoon. And I already told you guys I'm a bleach girl. I put a little bleach in everything that I do when I'm washing and cleaning, especially since the pandemic, you know, I get orders and stuff in, I just make sure that I sanitize everything real good. I'm going to lay this down on a piece of paper towel. So in case I have to use it again, be a good idea, won't it? Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to fill up just a couple jars on video and the sauce is still warm. The jars are still warm, and you guys know that you should never put hot jars in a cold uh, canner, and you should never put cold jars in hot water. So you want to make sure everything is like room temperature. Okay, so that's pretty good, and you can see that very well on camera. I'll put it right here so you can see it. I'm filling it up to that line. Let me show you. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to fill up the rest of the jars. I need to show you just one more thing. The uh, magnetic jar lifter. There's a magnet on the end there and that will help me facilitate getting these lids out. So I'm going to fill up the jars and then in case you're new to canning, I'll show you how I clean the jars and put the lids on and the rings. Okay, I'll come back. And let me just say why I'm filling up these jars, that I have thoroughly examined my jars for any nicks or cracks in the jars. They go in the garbage. And while I'm on the subject, let me tell you that I never reuse lids. They are designed to be used once, and that's what I do. I only use them one time. Now, I will keep them for like crafts, or if I'm gonna store some type of dry goods or candy or something like that that I'm not gonna pressure can or water bath can for my, my grand angels, I would use the lids for that. As far as canning is concerned, I never ever reuse a lid. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it because I know some people that do, but I just want you to know that I don't. Okay, guys, the next thing I'm gonna do is you can see I have my jars all filled. I'm gonna put three inches of water into my pressure canner. And I always put the pressure canner on the stove and then put the water in it because it's very heavy. It's, this model of American uh, pressure canner that I have is very heavy. So the next thing I'm going to do, let me move my little 
uh, sparkling water out the way. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take paper towel and I'm going to put a little vinegar on it. And I'm gonna wipe around the rim of my jar, rim of my jars. And if a little vinegar gets in there, that's fine too. Just gonna wipe around the outside. And I'm, I'm a little weird. I do this about three or four times, depending on how much grease is in the product. And when I see I have some product or the sauce on my um, paper towel, then I start with a fresh one. So this, I'm gonna do this several times. This is the second time I've done these. Two, three. Let's get this out the way. And all you really have to be concerned with is the rim and the actual part where the lid is going to sit on. See, right there. And then you might have some oil on your skin. I learned this uh, while I was teaching beauty school. You have to be careful, like when you're doing sculpture nails and you uh, need to have the surface to be really dry. Your natural oil on your nails or your skin can um, make a product not adhere to... Um, the nail and that applies to uh these jars if you keep touching it like this you got natural oil in your skin and that natural oil will stop that seal from uh adhering and staying sealed okay so i use a lot of paper towel when i'm doing this some people use a dishcloth and you can so I'm doing it the second time on these three. Moving my sleeve out of the way. So I know these are all done. So I know this one is really clean and I just have three more to go. Okay, guys, I want to pick up where I left off because, uh, you know, I told you it was my birthday, so I keep getting interrupted on this uh, cell phone. But I, as I was talking to the last person that was list, uh, wishing me a happy birthday, I went ahead and I wiped the rims of the jars again. And so this is actually going to be the fourth time, uh, fifth time, I'm sorry, to get my, so I'm just making contact across the top now. And nothing's coming off because I've done it over and over and over. Now it's time to take my neck magnetic holder and pick up a lid that's been in this warm water. I'm going to place them on top and make sure you only have one. And you're going to put it on just finger tight. Don't try to make it too tight. Just finger tight. And then we're gonna put it into the canner and it's already uh, warming up. Pick them up this way. And there's one. And we're gonna make sure that's just finger tight. Make sure that lid is on nice and even. Pick up one ring. To put on one lid, finger tight, that's three down, four, and we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll just do one more. Finger tight. I'll let you see that. So we have seven jars in three inches of water. Um, it'll hold seven quarts. 
And you guys know that the bottom of it is a um, stainless steel um, little tray so your jars don't come in direct contact with the hot surface. Here, so I'm gonna move this out the way so you know nothing will catch you on fire. Okay, I had to do a voiceover around um, this portion of the video because my phone kept ringing. Um, that's the vinegar that I'm putting into the pot. And I'm putting just a little bit more. And what that does is for my hard water, it prevents my jars from getting real cloudy. So that's a little pearl from Cheryl. If you have water, hard water, put a little vinegar in it. But next thing that I'm going to do is to put my top on my All-American Canner, model number 921. And I am securing the little bolts. And then I'm going to wait until... The gear gauge shows me that it is between 10 and 11. And that's my weight that I need for my altitude that I'm showing you. And after the gear gauge gets to between 10 and 11, and steam starts to come out of the opening that you put the uh, weight on for 10 minutes, then I will put the weight on it and start timing for 90 minutes. So I'm not going to let you, you know, sit there for 10 minutes and prolong this video. Now is the time to put the 10-pound weight on for my altitude because the gear gauge is between 10 and 11. And so I'm putting on the weight and then I'll pressure can the jars for 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes for quarts, 75 minutes for pints. Okay, guys, just a quick short talk. I want to share something with you. You can look up under here and see that I've turned the gas off 10 minutes ago. The weight is still on here, and the pressure is almost down. Now, this is when people try to rush the process. They try to open up the canner. Um, and I know you've seen people trying to scare you and post pictures of what happened to their aunt or whatever. Well, you see that gear gauge, it has to go all the way down to zero. And you just need to be patient. And once that goes down to zero, then you take the weight off. Not before. Because you can hear it. Let me be quiet. You can hear it still boiling in there. So wait until it's time. And if you do what you're supposed to do, you shouldn't have any fear of pressure canning, okay? I'll come back when this is all the way at zero before I move the pressure. Okay, okay guys, I'm coming in real close so you can see this. There is no uh, pressure built up in so this So now thing. I'm going to remove the 10 pound weight. And you can hear a little hissing sound, but not a lot. Okay, so it's time for me to take the uh, bolts off. I'm just going to unscrew them. And now this is the part. I'm going to push the can a little forward because you see the microwave is here. It's a little warm. I'll get two pot holders and push it a little bit forward, but making sure that it won't fall. And then I'm going to take the top off. Carefully remove the top, of keeping it away from you in case there's some extra steam. And then you're going to just go ahead and get your jar gripper. Place the gripper on the jar and gently remove it from the water. And I place it on a cutting board with a towel, or you could just use a couple towels. It doesn't really matter. So that's the six jars, pardon me, seven jars out of the canner. And if you look real close, especially right here, you'll see that it's still boiling a little bit. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is just put some paper towel or towel on top of here. And this is a wood butcher block. 
and you you can hear it popping it's sealing and you can just put it on a, you know a couple of towels but i like to put it on top of the butcher block in the towel just heard another one seal and you can just put a towel on top of them or you can put paper towel leave them undisturbed for 24 hours and then you come back and you will take the rings off the lids and you will put your date on top of the lid where the space indicates and i usually just put the month and the year but you can put the whole date if you want and this sauce is very thick and very hearty. You can take this and mix it with one jar of your plain pasta sauce, like I already have canned, and you have a meal. Uh, you can also take this meat sauce and add um, chili spices to it to turn it into a chili and add some of your beans that you can. There's so much that you can do with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, guys, don't be afraid to press your can. As long as you let all of the pressure out of the canner, it will not cause you to have any problems. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to watch this video. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my holiday, which is my birthday. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel.